Okay, so today we're going to make the uh, the top section of a filigree bangle. And because it's going to be an oval bangle, we're going to start off by going into the curve menu. We're going to select the ellipse tool and I'm going to uh, select the center of the ellipse in the uh, in the through finger viewport as F4 the end of the first axis, the radius of which is going to be 30 and hit enter, hold down shift and left click once and then the end of the second axis is going to be 27 and hit enter, hold down shift and left click again. It's going to give us our rail for our bangle. The next thing that we need to do is we need to select our rail, hit F6 and we're going to place a profile on this rail. I'm going to uh, stick with the the default. I'm going to increase the width out to 10 mil wide by 3.5 thick, and hit enter. And now I'm going to sweep this around. Select the rail F6 and sweep one with history. The command line will ask to select the profile and then hit enter and that will sweep our profile around and we now have a bangle that we can put into the job bags. <coughs> if we show that up you can see what we have. Alright, the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to, uh, because we're only focusing on the top part of the bangle, I'm going to come across to the command line, uh, sorry, the curve line, uh, menu here and select my curve just from F4. I'll change that to a different layer color for the moment. Hold down shift and left click there. And then for the opposite side, I'm, uh, I'm going to select maybe an arc direction and from there to there, hold down shift and create something like that. So these are just curves and what I'm going to do with these curves is I am now going to turn them into surfaces by going to the surface menu and selecting surface extrude all. I'm going to click on the straight option there and take that out to about say there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my bangle go into the main toolbar and select split. It's going to ask me to select my cutting objects which are going to be my two surfaces and then hit enter when they're done. That will have split this up for me so I can select this bottom half and delete that now and what I can do is select now the surfaces that I use to split those, hit enter and the cutting object this time is going to be the remnant of the bangle and hit enter again. And now I can select that surface and delete that one and delete that one there. We don't need those curves anymore either. And I can now join those up. So join it all up in the main toolbar with the join button and we'll put that onto the green layer color. The next thing that I want to do is in the side viewport here I'm going to select my curve menu again and this time I'm going to select the polyline. I'm going to turn my grid snap on for this particular part of the exercise and I'm going to come across from the top about there and hit enter. I'm going to mirror this around F4 hold down shift to engage ortho and select both of those curves and join that up. And now I'm going to select that particular curve just take it out so it's a little bit closer to where I want it to go and I'm going to go to surface extrude all hit the straight option, take it out to about say there and now 
We're going to select our bangle, hit split, select the surface and enter. I'm going to delete what we don't need anymore. And then enter will bring back that split tool again. This time the object we want to split is our original surface, enter, and the cutting object will be our bangle, enter. Now we can get rid of this. And we want to make sure that we join all of that up so that it's one closed poly surface. So we select it all and hit join. And then we'll put that onto the green layer again. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extract a few isocurves. And to do that, I'm going to go into the uh, curve menu again and select extract isocurve. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the surface for isocurve extraction, which is going to be this surface. And I'm just going to toggle that uh, so that I've got... Um, I'm going to use this isocurve here. And obviously you would have your measurements that you would prefer to use. Uh, but for the demonstration purpose, I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to do it by eye, and then I'm going to toggle that again, and this time I'm going to snap to the midpoint there, and then hit enter. With that, uh, I'm going to just hide my green layer for the moment, and I'm going to select all of my red curves there. And I'm going to hit trim in the main toolbar. And I'm just going to trim up what I don't want, which are these uh, little bits there. And then hit enter again. Now what I'm going to do is switch my uh, green layer back on. Select my curve here and hit F6. I'm going to uh, place a profile on here and hit mirror in the command line and take this position all the way down to there. I'm going to take my curve out to eight millimeters wide. And the depth I'm going to take to 3.5 mil. And I'm going to uh, offset the piece by about th uh, three, sorry, uh, 2.5 mil. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to hit enter. Then I'm going to select my curve. I'm going to hit F6 and go to sweep one with history and select my two new profiles here. and hit enter and I'm going to select my surface and go to solid and cap planar and that will make that one closed poly surface. The next thing I'm going to do is go into, go into my tools menu and go into the boolean builder. I'm going to select boolean intersection for this and I'm going to select my surface, my red surface there, and then I'm going to select my green surface there, and I'm going to hit boolean. And that's going to give me the intersecting piece between those particular surfaces, which I have here. I'm going to put that onto the purple layer, and I'm going to put that into a job bag. Once I've got that there, I'm going to hit undo boolean, and that's going to undo that whole process. And now I'm going to change from Boolean Intersection to Boolean Difference and select my bangle and then select my red cutter or my red surface that will now act as a cutter and put that into the cutter window and I'm going to Boolean that away. That will leave me with this void here and when we click on this job bag that will bring back that purple section which will fit perfectly into that void. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use a tool that's called SmartFlow 
and in order to use SmartFlow we're going to uh, first of all create a base surface so to do that we go to the transform menu and the second level of the transform menu we find our SmartFlow auto base we're going to select that and click on the surface that we want to uh, create a, an auto base from and that's not exactly right so let me delete that let me first of all explode this purple surface and hit enter and now let me hit smart flow auto base and select that top surface there and that's better that's what we're after and that basically has rolled that surface out flat. Now because this was part of a bangle, it's actually rolled the entire bangle out flat. So we really only need to concentrate on a part from about, say, here to here. With this, I'm going to change it to a, uh, a different layer color. And now we can bring out our pattern. Now I brought a, uh, a pattern into Matrix before by importing a bitmap and I traced around that particular bitmap and put it into a job bag which is in job bag number 6 there and that's the pattern that I, I'm going to use for this bangle. So with that said, the first thing I'm going to do is select my, uh, my bangle by region selecting it as well as the Uh, the surface and I'm just going to deselect these parts here and I'm just going to drag that down so that the surface is more along the lines of F4 that'll make it easier for us to select this piece and mirror around when we need to so first of all let me group that together I'm just going to select utilities and hit group and now that will be one piece so we can just select one piece now and everything will select and the first thing that we'll need to do is obviously scale this uh, particular piece down so we're going to go to the transform menu the top level here and we're going to go scale 2d from f4 hold down shift to engage ortho and we can scale that down so that it's going to fit where we need it to fit. So that's a little bit more accurate. Let me just uh, go to utilities and hit center. There we go. Okay. So now what we can do is we can simply enact the uh, the SmartFlow function by clicking on the transform menu and clicking on SmartFlow and anything that we happen to put onto this green surface will now transfer across to the purple surface once we've selected the base surface object which is the green surface and the destination surface which is our purple surface up the top here and now you can see that that has now transferred across now the beauty about SmartFlow is that anything that we happen to place on this surface will automatically transfer across. We can scale, we can uh, move things around and uh, you know extrude curves which I'm about to do in a moment but the first thing I need to do is I want to select the piece there and I need to scale that up just a little bit more so by using scale 2D from F4 just scale that up a touch and we'll see the uh, the changes over here and once we're happy with that we can then quite easily select the uh, the curves that we've got there and we can hit duplicate from F4 hold down shift to engage ortho and come across like so. Let's see how that transfers across. Okay, so we can obviously get away with a few more, maybe two more down there. So let's do that again. Duplicate from F4. Hold down Shift to engage author. 
Let's zoom on in. Oops, not so far. So let's just fix these ones here up. So that there's no overlap there. Something like that will be fine. And again, And finally, and you can see here that we could probably get away with maybe one more of those. So we're going to select this guy here again and duplicate from F4 and just uh, hold down Shift again. So something like that there, and then hit enter. Now you might find that this one here is obviously going a little bit too far. So as a result we can select this one and maybe scale it in using 1D scale from that midpoint there, holding down shift and scaling it in a little until we're happy with the size of it. And as I said before, you would do all of your measurements before working on this. This is purely for demonstration purposes. And I'm okay with that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select four of these and I'm going to hit mirror around F4. Hold down shift and we'll do a check on the opposite side. And again, you'll find that uh, with this one here, we're going to just scale that down a little bit more from, say, there. Alright, so once we have our pattern out there, what we can do next is we can select all of our curves here and in the uh, side viewport we're going to go to the solid menu and hit extrude curve straight. We can take that out to where we want it to go. A little bit of overkill is fine with this one here. And that's going to transfer across onto the actual piece for us. I do apologize for the time that it's taking on my computer. It's uh, an older computer. The more powerful your processor, the quicker this operation will be. Okay, so let's have a look in the perspective menu here. And we can see here that the uh, the extrusion has gone where we want it to go, all the way through that purple section there, well and truly through here. And now what we can do is, now that we have our pattern ready to go, we can select this and delete it. We don't need that there anymore. Let's just turn off that green layer for a moment and before we do anything else we're going to select the purple layer 
and then just join it all back together again so that it's one closed polysurface. Then what we're going to do is go into the Boolean intersection tool, select our purple layer and put it into one of the windows and then we're going to select the red layer and put that into the other window. And once that's done, we're going to come across here to where it says one by one and force boolean. Let me just select that again and put that into that window. and select one by one, force boolean and boolean away. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us the uh, the intersecting pieces between those two solid objects. So let me pause the video while it does that. The final result will be this. So let me just turn off that red layer and you'll end up with a filigree section that when we turn the green layer back on matches perfectly with the uh, the surface or that uh, original top profile surface there. As far as rendering this up is concerned, I would probably select it and lay it down on its side, just in the side viewport here, and I'm just going to rotate that around Let's say from about there, hold down shift and take it down to about there. Going to just uh, rotate the the view around a little bit more. And we're going to open up our random uh, builder, or random menu, and open up the V-Ray builder. <coughs> We're going to, first of all, change our HDRI map. I'm just going to go to a fast HDRI. And then I'm going to put down a ground plane by selecting Create Ground Plane. And then I'm just going to position the piece where I would like to render it. I'm just going to turn this off for the moment. I'm going to select a oh, the ground plane there. And uh, I'm going to go to the uh, ground plane library, select white mat and apply that to that material. Then I'm going to go to the ring material or the metals material, select uh, say platinum and maybe the purple will do as rose gold. Now you'll notice here that we have quite a few different shades of rose gold at the moment. This one here is selected, but if we wanted something a little bit rosier, then we could select that one there and hit update. That will update a preview for us. And then if we're happy with that particular shade of rose gold, then we can apply that to that material by clicking on the green button here. Once we see the flash, it's been applied. Then all we need to do is hit render and that will render that particular object up for us. And we will end up with a render that looks like this here. So we can save that render. And close it down. Now if you wanted to find out how heavy this particular piece was going to be, let's get rid of our ground plane. We can go into the tools menu and go to our metal weight section. Let's roll up a few of these menus. And we can select say the base of the bangle or at the top part of the bangle and hit calculate. 
that's going to tell us that in all these different col uh, kinds of metals it's going to be those particular weights you're wanting to do this in silver you're looking down here in brass 11 grams and so on and so on it's quite a few different uh, metals that it will calculate for the same thing for the purple section there so if we were to highlight all of the uh, the purple layers and hit calculate then that will also provide us with a calculation an approximate metal weight of those particular items there too okay if you have any other questions then please feel free to let me know i hope that helps